Hello ladies and gentlemen of the YouTube community, my name is Cool Scootaloo and today we're going into another Mercy 101 guide. If you guys haven't seen the other Mercy 101 guides that go over healing prioritization and the basics of Mercy then they'll be down in the description below for you guys to watch. Now in today's episode we're going to be talking about Mercy's damage boosting ability. Now the damage boosting similarly has the same properties of the healing thing when it comes to the caduceus staff you still have to be within 15 meters for it to maintain a sh constant stream and you to have line of sight on your target but where it differs is well you're not healing you are going to be damage boosting your ally now your ally is going to be receiving a 30 percent increase in damage so for example if that person does 100 damage then that means they would do 130 damage with your damage boost. Now, if you guys are stat nerds like me and like to know the damage numbers of every single little thing with and without Mercy's damage boost, I will be having a list in the description down below where I do have every hero's ability or weapons that does damage in there and then it shows how much damage it does normally and then there's like a separation and then it shows you the number how much it would do for a mercy damage buff now unless if it says otherwise it's gonna be damage per shot and not damage per second unless if it says otherwise if it says like dps or something else now i will not be going over all of the heroes um, and why the Mercy damage buff is or is not good without them. But I'll be going over the key people who are who benefit from the Mercy damage buff. Now these characters include McCree, Fada, Soldier76, Bastion, Roadhog, and Zarya. Now these characters are the best to damage boost no matter what. They're always good to damage boost and you will not go wrong damage boosting them. Now, McCree can always use the more extra damage, especially if he lands those headshots. Because if McCree lands a headshot with your damage buff, he does 182 damage. That is a lot of damage. That's gonna decrease your enemy's health to about 12 if they are an assault hero who is not Reaper. So, the Tracer, she's dead in one shot. 76 and all the other 200 health heroes which is like half of the heroes in overwatch are on the brink of death and literally only needs to be shot with one lucio sonic amplifier shot to kill them so that is an incredibly powerful damage buff and it will save you a lot of games and it will make the your games way easier now for farah is this is actually pretty interesting now farah does normally 120 damage on a direct hit rocket shot but with mercy's damage boost it does 156 damage per direct hit rocket shot now what this means is that if fada hits an enemy four times directly if they're not being healed by mercy or a healer they will die no matter what the only exception is roadhog with Torbjorn's armor. Even with a symmetric shield, he is still going to die unless if he does self-heal himself. Which is a really great ability because if you do direct hit a tracer, she is dead. If you basically hit anyone else, they'll be below they'll be at 46 health and they're easily picking damage and they have to be out of the fight just to get a health pack or getting healed by a healer. Now Soldier 76, it is good to damage buff him because one his biotic field will help you and him regenerate health while you are damage buffing him and two just for clip damage he does way more with your mercy damage buff now normally he does 425 damage per clip if he does not miss any shots or get any hot shots it's 425 damage now with your damage boost that's 542.5 damage and just a headshot alone with Soldier 76's pulse rifle um, from 35 meters or closer will do 44.2 damage. That is almost one fourth of your enemy's health taken away in one shot. And Soldier 76 has 25 shots. So if he lands that headshot with your damage boost, you are pretty well certain that the enemy will fear Soldier 76. 
Now, Bastion should be damage boosted by Mercy because, well, he's Bastion. He fires 35 rounds per second. I don't see why you would not damage above him. But, you know, just just saying, you know, it's always good to damage boost buff for Bastion. You know, just saying. Now, the next hero on this list is Roadhog. Now, Ro Roadhog, even though most Mercies only damage buff him when he's doing his chain hook combo his single shot is still really deadly and if there is a roadhog on the battlefield if he surprisingly does not need healing it is good to damage boost him while his chain hook combo is happening and j just because his hook is only on a six second cooldown it is well worth it damage boosting the roadhog if you do have the chance to because roadhog chain hook combo was just a hook and a shot, not even including the melee, is 225 damage. And if you damage boost him while doing that, then the hook combo is 331.5 damage. Now, that is enough damage to take out anyone besides a tank, which is pretty scary. But it is also good for you because that is basically an instant 6v5 battle that you can easily win because, well, man advantage. Now, our last hero on the list is Zarya. Now, I'm not saying Zarya is a bad character to boost or a good character to always boost, but it's more on the psychology level because Zarya, when she's at zero charge, everyone knows she's at zero charge. Now, you can take this into your favor and damage booster making it so it simulates her having 30 energy or 30 energy charge when she actually has zero now this can be underestimated by flankers winston and other people especially genji because genji is completely weak towards Zarya because the only thing he can reflect is the balls but yet again Zarya will shoot him with the beam instead because well he jumps around a lot and stuff so if Genji misjudges that Zarya is actually putting out 30% more damage and it actually if you look at the if you do calculate it Zarya instead of doing 95 damage a second with her beam does 117 damage per second with her beam which is really scary and it totally throws off the enemy because they're getting melted faster than usual and a lot of people underestimate Mercy's damage buff sometimes but sometimes it can really be good in the use of a good player and when it comes to Zarya I guess it's more about psychology and just scaring them off and they're wondering why they're getting hit so fast maybe they're getting hit by like another Winston or something but it really throws off your enemy, like the psychology of your enemy when you damage boost a Zarya who's at zero charge because they don't expect them to do that much damage. Now there are some times where you should be using damage boost on more situational occasions on different heroes. Now this includes Reaper when he's engaging tanks or enemies, Hanzo or Widowmaker for the first picks for a team fight, Junkrat just for destroying Reinhardt's barrier because your damage boost instead of 120 damage per damage to Reinhardt's shield and stuff it would do 156 damage per grenade May Icicle shot because if May hits a headshot which does 150 damage alone will increase it to 195 damage which is basically enough to kill anyone who is at 200 health or maybe even a reaper who clocked in at 250 health. Reinhard after he uses his earth shatter and just goes in for the melee and follow up kills. Now this really applies to whoever is My but whoever is yeah, nano boosted it is great to damage buff them because they even do more damage and they can kill the enemy faster. And lastly anyone when the enemies are in Graviton Surge. Now while there is a Reinhardt or something, or maybe there isn't a Reinhardt, it is great to just unload damage into that thing so you can have as much damage and just hurt the enemy team as much as possible. So damage buffing a Junkrat in that situation where there is a Graviton Surge is a great idea, but if there is a Bastion then I, I sadly admit it, but damage boost the Bastion.
now for this last segment, you guys are probably wondering, okay, which ultimates are the best damage boosts, you know? I because, you know, we all have seen Mercy and you know you've done it where you damage buff, you know, the Reaper ulting or the Diva ulting or the Junkrat ulting. Yeah, I've seen you, but well I'm here to break some of the myths and some of the truths behind well people's all damage boosts. Now this is in no particular order, but I'm gonna give you probably the top five people to damage boost. But yet again, this is very, very like maybe you might have a star Genji, and go ahead, just buff the Genji if he is a good Genji, and you're not gonna die hopefully in the process. But to me, these are the best ultimates for you to damage buff without getting completely destroyed as Mercy. Also remember, this is in no particular order, and I was saying the first one I read off is the fifth or is the first because I do have five in this list. Now the first person I have on this list is Fada's Barrage. Now while Fada casts Barrage, she does 40 damage per rocket, but with the damage boost, she does 52 damage per rocket. And she fires 90 rockets in total, 30 per second if you guys haven't already know that. So that's a little FYI tip. If you want if you're wanting to know how long Fada actually stays up there, she stays up in the air for 3 seconds while running 30 rockets per second. Now this means if four of the rockets hit a 200 HP character, they're dead. Like mostly it'll take five because, well, 40 times five is 200 and then the 52 you can just round it to 50 and then it only takes four. So if four, if four of the 90 rockets hit a 200 HP character like Mercy or anyone else who has 200 HP health or lower, they're dead which is a great thing to go by because some of the times Fada mostly doesn't live during her ultimate and <laughs> it's always good to have that extra damage in just to well barrage the enemy. Now the second on this list is Reaper's Death Blossom. Now, now Reaper's Death Blossom, um, while he is like the front lines and they're, he's within the enemy, it's actually kind of safe to do it because since he does shoot in a 360 degree angle, most of the times you will be safe if you do damage boost him and then you are somewhat behind like somewhat of cover and not wide out in the open. You'll mostly be safe from any enemy shooting you while they'll mostly be dead trying to kill the reaper. And keep in mind guys, if reaper is about to die during death blossom, don't damage boost him, like try and heal him, because I've seen some mercies who just damage boost during ults, and it kind of annoys me that they don't switch to healing, because like, oh you're putting out the damage, but he's gonna die though, and that's gonna make it a 6v5, or you're just gonna be one man down, which is completely, you know, i rather have him be alive and then have some of the enemies be on the brink of death so he can finish them off with the 1 2 from his um, Hellfire shotguns. Now, it is good to damage boost the Hanzo's Dragon Trick because instead of doing 200 damage per second in the dragons, it does 260 damage per second, which is significantly better than 200 damage. So, you know, why, why wouldn't you? And also, now if you guys are playing in an adequate team, you guys should have the Hanzo in your backlines and not just 30, 30 meters behind the enemy firing a dragon strike at them. So if the Hanzo is close to you and in a relatively safe distance so you don't randomly get picked off because he's on the front lines or in the enemy's backlines, then it is safe and there really is no reason why you shouldn't damage boost the Hanzo ult. Now Roadhog, well, <laughs> what can I say about this? Roadhog in total does 5,000 damage with his whole hog, which is insane, but if you do the damage increase, it increases it to 6,500 damage during his ult, which is insane, and why wouldn't you do it? Like, come on, it's 1,500 more damage, you wouldn't. Now, last on this list, not a lot of people do this, but it's actually Soldier 76's Tact Visor. Now, Soldier 76, hey, basically, yeah, he has auto-aim, and, you know, he can just shoot, and then, you know, it can be countered by Reinhardt shield and everything. But if the Reinhardt shield is down, and you give him the damage boost, it's actually really, really good. Because he kills enemies 30% more faster, 
And remember, instead of doing 17 damage per shot, because Soldier 76 dropout range begins at 35 meters, he'll be doing 22.1 damage per shot, which kills enemies within 10 shots if they are within the 200 HP health pool. Now it's time to bring in some of the myths to bust or confirm some of the myths that you guys have been wondering about Mercy's damage buff. Now we're gonna go on to this one situation that me personally, I've known but not a lot of people know and I wasn't even too sure if it actually helped and this is McCree's Deadeye or as well known as It's Hanu. Now, McCree has, I believe, 6 seconds to lock onto enemies, and then he lines up the kill shot. And then with the more health the enemy has, the more it takes for the lock-on to happen. Now, while McCree, when McCree pops Deadeye, you can not even damage buff him. But if you damage buff him right before the shot, and the damage buff is still applied during when he does activate and shoot all of his targets, then it will apply 30% more damage to each one of those shots. So what I'm saying, if McCree locks on to a person for one second, the normal thing would be to do 170 damage because it's, it's around there. I'm not too, I'm not sure if that's the right amount because it was an estimated value from the wiki. But he does around 170 damage for a lock on through his dead eye. If you if Mercy if Mercy damage buff when he fires then the person would actually take 221 damage for the shot. So technically, Mercy can damage boost McCree's ultimate. Now another myth I will like to buzz is Tracer's Pulse Bomb. Now Tracer Pulse Bomb does 400 damage, 400 damage even. Now even if Tracer sticks the enemy, if you damage buff the Tracer, as long as the bomb did not explode yet and maintain the damage boost on Tracer until it explodes, it would do 30% more damage, which in result would do 520 damage, which basically insta kills everybody except Roadhog. And now, another myth I'll nice. like to confirm, I guess, is that yes, Mercy's damage boost does work and with Hanzo's Dragon Shrike, so he instead of doing 200 damage per second with the dragons, he does 260 damage per second with the dragons. Now another myth I'll actually like to bust now is Junkrat's Riptire. If you damage boost Junkrat when he is using his Riptire, this has no effect on the Riptire's damage. Nope. It still does a standard 600 damage and it doesn't really apply to anything else. It doesn't increase his damage for the tire. Now this can be also applied to Diva Self Destruct and Torbjorn's Turret. But it does increase his concussive mind and his steel trap along with his well primary weapon. Now the last myth on this is well Mercy and Anna. While they do have primary weapons that heal, it does not actually nope. increase their yeah, output in healing, even though if you do buff them with the damage buff. So what I'm saying is that if you damage boost an Ana and then she shoots an ally, she's still going to do the same amount of healing as she always will and not receive a 30% damage increase or I guess healing increase. Now that's all I really have to say about this damage buffing guide for Mercy. If you guys enjoyed this video, please please press that like button down below. If you guys feel so compelled to, please subscribe as well I'll be making some more Overwatch content and more Mercy content. I'll be also, hopefully, if school would stop killing me with homework and other stuff killing me, I will be do hopefully doing a Lucio guide and maybe in the future a uh, Zenyatta or Ana guide. So I'll be coming out with those hopefully soon enough, hopefully within the next week or two. But yeah, again, I'll still be working on Mercy because Mercy is my favorite support and she just reminds me of the TF2 medic. So that's why I love her so much, probably. So I hope you guys enjoy this video and I hope you guys have a great and wonderful day. Goodbye.